Hi everyone. I'm Krishna. I have been working in IT for close to 16 years. So today's agenda is about what is blockchain? What are the job opportunities today are there in the market for the blockchain? Then we will understand what are the skills required in order to become a blockchain developer? What exactly is a blockchain development platform? And then we'll talk about smart contract development and popular D apps which are available today to do this kind of blockchain development. What is blockchain? So blockchain basically, uh, if you see, uh, basically it's a advanced database mechanism is what I would say. So where uh, uh, it allows your transparent information sharing within a business network. When I say transparent information sharing within a business network. So if you see here, your information at any point is like, will not be stored in a single point as such. It is stored in a decentralized and distributed system. And when I say distributed system, it is across all the network, your information will be available, but not one point, which generally happens, right? Like if you see Amazon Flipkart, they store all their information in particular database. They don't have this kind of technology. So if at all, I mean, they do have a lot of security and all that, but if at all they have something like some hack attack or DDoS happen, Amazon or Flipkart do get it because they have certain databases which are like a centralized for the entire website. But blockchain is not as such. It is a decentralized system. So as you can see from the diagram, this each box represents different, different peer networks. And the data, whatever we are talking about, the entire database is stored as a, a decentralized system rather than a centralized system. And it's a peer-to-peer -peer network like it is mentioned. And the storage here called as a ledger storage, or you can call it as a distributed ledger, which is the, actually the storage component of it, where it is distributed across. That's why the name distributed. And there is a consensus module protocol comes in, which actually helps you to authorize whether the things are really, in fact, uh, you know, uh, good to consider or good to trust or not. So it's basically an immutable database is what we call it out. So these are the things I'm talking about. Blockchain basically runs on a distributed network. Your database is at a decentralized system. It is not centralized in one point. When I say centralized, it is not in one computer where it you just do some hack or you actually do keep on sending a lot of requests and suddenly it goes down, everything is down. No, it is actually distributed across the network. That means even if let's say the database is distributed across the network and even if I be able to get one particular host in that, I got it down, still my system will work fine without any issues because there are other things where these, uh, you know, the database and all is that. So that's the main advantage of it because you're not keeping one thing or entire storage at one centralized space. It is decentralized. When I say decentralized, it is distributed across the network. That's why the second point, no single point of failure. When we get single point of failure, when you store everything in one common place, which is not the case here. And obviously, uh, when you don't store at a single uh, network, any kind of DDoS attacks. DDoS attacks is like uh, you keep on sending requests to one server uh, indefinitely and you keep on hitting it like anything from the same IP, something like that. So it is called denial of service attack. DDoS means denial of service attack. And when you do it, your intent of doing it is to bring the server down. That kind of things is not possible here because like I said, it is not in a particular host or something. It is distributed across. So even if you are able to bring one thing down, the entire system still work fine. That's the best advantage of it. Now, how the storage happens. So storage here happens using a concept called shared ledger. You can consider it as a, like a storage system which blockchain uses. And this storage ledger is also replicated across the network. Let's say you have a network of 100 hosts. All the networks have this shared ledger. And all the nodes, nodes here means you can consider like servers, are actually kept in sync using these consensus. Like the sync will happen automatically. And this serves as a single source of truth the ledger and it is the responsibility of the blockchain network to ensure this ledger is always in sync and everybody can see the same data because generally when you are actually decentralizing it there's a lot of the sync issues because of network latency or whatever the sync issues can happen and one guy will see one storage uh, one data in the storage another guy will see some other thing which will not be the case here because we have something called a consensus happens to keep the things in sync so blockchain like i was saying like it uses a concept whenever there is any decision to make, like for example, let's say you have, you're authorizing a data and if you want to authorize, you want to get to a consensus, whether it's trustworthy or not, it uses a concept called consensus. And 
that consensus how it does is it has different kind of consensus algorithms so consensus is more of you know uh, agreeing that between the parties you are agreeing yes data is correct enough and all that and for all this internally it uses a lot of cryptography algorithms by the way and just to let you know cryptography algorithms are nothing but cryptography is a, like a different kind of science where it deals completely with encryption decryption algorithm digital signatures hash keys hash algorithms all that so that is the science which deals with all this security stuff so those also heavily used as part of blockchain algorithm in fact this particular concept was bought up not recently it is bought up in nothing around 1980s and it was like a thesis paper written by one of the cryptographer where he said we can use something like a blockchain protocol that's how it arrived and the consensus algorithm when i say there are different types of consensus algorithm these are the different names of the consensus algorithm. i mean the variety of consensus algorithm we have one is proof of work proof of stake proof of elapsed time proof of burn and proof of capacity so these are the different consensus algorithm which will be serving as the main part of the network in order to help users to get to a consensus now like i was telling cryptography is the way of securing and encrypting data and blockchain uses a lot of cryptographic algorithms in order to ensure the network security is intact because when you're saying you are distributing the data across the internet and there's no ddos how you ensure the data is shared across and how you ensure those data is actually you can trust what if somebody tampered it how you know about it so that's why it uses a lot of cryptography and like i said cryptography is a science of all encryption decryption algorithms and hash algorithms so it uses uh, blockchain uses a lot of techniques there so one technique it uses is something called public private key uh, uh, method method another is it uses digital signatures also to ensure if the data sent is a uh, valid or not or if the data sent is not tampered by somebody all this now what are the blockchain profile in the market like what are the job opportunities uh, with respect to blockchain so uh, in case you worked on blockchain or you taken in a training in a blockchain you can actually join as a blockchain consultant and if you know about lot of technology behind cryptographic algorithm and all that and you know how to design things using cryptography and blockchain you can go as a blockchain architect and if you have a moderate level of knowledge about how things work and you know how to develop things in blockchain or cryptography so that you make the network more secure enough uh, you can join as a blockchain developer as well so these are the key job roles available in the market today with respect to the blockchain profile now what is a requirement for blockchain i mean like we are talking about this that and all in the blockchain right so what is the requirement so i already spoke about you might have already guess uh, guess by this time in order to become a blockchain developer or architect two things are commonly needed one definitely you should have a domain knowledge about blockchain very well another obviously i keep calling cryptography these are the two heart of it remaining and all you can automatically gain that is something you can uh, get in and some of these you might have already gained as part of your previous development experience or academic experience but these two are heart of the entire blockchain one is the domain knowledge about blockchain another is cryptography other than that you uh, the, the job uh, or the role expectation particularly the blockchain uh, if you want to get into this particular domain the expectation is you should be good in data structures you should be good in web development and you should be good in smart contract these are the other things we need to be have along with it i hope most of them already aware of data structures because you might have done some academics if your guys are coming from some computer non computer science background so mostly just to give you a sense of what is a data structure is a uh, data structure is more about you know let's say you have a generally you might have heard about array list and all right what are this we will call it as data types right yeah but technically see they are also one type of data structures like for example if you take array what you will do in array you will actually do some kind of adding elements you will actually do some kind of removing elements you will do some kind of inserting elements at any point these are the different operations allowed on that data type data structure is basically a data type along with certain operation and semantics along with it so whatever we are doing we will not call it as data types we will call them as data types but those two are called as a data structure in fact data structure concept is more about how you actually logically you know it's like a logical organization of data that means you have a data how you logically organize so that you can get the access the data faster or you can sort the data faster or you can retrieve the data faster or you can do some searching in the data in a much much faster way 
the data you can get in any way, but it is all about how you logically organize so that things happen in a faster rate. So the entire concept of data structure revolves around it, where you talk about what is the best time here, average time here, and worst time here in order to uh, search or sort or whatever. So those are all the concepts you see primarily in data structures. And coming to web development, where basically it is all about how you develop things so that it actually surfaces up at in the internet and starts running on the internet so that other people can access your web pages and all. So those and all things comes in web development. So those are the things basically you need to have in order to be a blockchain developer or architect. Now, what are the different platforms you have in order to develop blockchain? So you have one thing called Ethereum, another is Hyperledger, and there is Iota and Stellar. These are the popular ones. You do see a lot of other things in the market, but these are like commonly known things. Just like how we know about commonly domains, even though there are hundreds of domains available in the market, these are the most commonly applied platforms for any blockchain development. So now what is smart contract development and how do you do? So basically, if you want to do a smart contract and basically, if you want to develop those smart contract development, so there are some development languages in order to do smart contract. So something like you have Solidity, you have Serpent, you have Viper, you have Lisk, and you have Chaincode. To simply to put, smart contracts are nothing but programs, as simple as that. Actually, they are like a programs which will run when a particular condition is satisfied. So it is basically what being used is they are actually put up in a way, it is like you can consider like a, you know, you might have put a condition that at a particular time, when a particular time hits at this point, I want this to be executed. That if it is running in blockchain, you can call it as a smart contract. Okay. And these are actually meant to automate some kind of agreement ex agreement, uh, uh, agreement in order to execute an agreement. These are actually automated in such a way so that whoever is the peers in the network, they can actually you know, be, uh, you can actually, they can actually participate and without any data loss and as such. So that's actually smart contractors. It's basically, you can consider like a programs that is written when it, and if it gets executed when a predetermined condition is met. And in fact, if I want to give you a real time example, you might have seen in your office, there is something called uh, vending machines, right? You might have put a money and after you put money, it will, it will, they will have a, uh, for each of the food item, it will have a money put up, right? Like 10 rupees for a lace or 20 rupees for a thumbs up bottle like that. And you, when you put a proper uh, amount, it automatically gives you that particular item, right? So it's actually a smart contract example. And similarly, if you go to a railway station these days, even the platform ticket, if you want to get, at least in India, I see it is automated. Where you just put the money and you will get it. So the agreement here is, like if you see what I said about smart contract, it's a predetermined condition that get executed when a particular condition is met. Here the condition is you are supposed to put a money which it is expecting in order to deliver that particular ticket, at least in a railway station. And when you put that money, automatically you're getting a ticket. So that's being the contract setup or the program set up in a way where it looks at for that particular amount. And as soon as you put the expected, it gives you that, whatever you needed. So those are like different examples in real time when you say what is smart contract. And the development languages are available are these, Solidity Serpent, Viper, Lisk, and Chaincode. And we have popular dApps. So like, for example, basically dApps means it's decentralized applications. So it's just a shortcut being used. And smart contracts are the heart behind all these decentralized applications. And what are the things that you can do is like, um, if you see Lazos, the Uber Killer, or Lero, decentralized Twitter, Locket, Blockchain Plus IoT, these are all different kinds of distributed, decentralized applications, as an example. Now let's take a problem statement. Uh, there is this thing called Kickstarter. Assume that Kickstarter is one of the largest funding platform for creative projects. And if you want to apply to Kickstarter for some business funding, let's say we are getting a lot of money and we want to fund uh, some amount there. Now, uh, understand the problem use case that rewards and crowdfunding crowdfunding are usually handled by a central unchangeable database that keeps track of all donors. Donors mean somebody who gives the money. Anyone who missed deadline for the campaign cannot get in anymore and any donor who changed their mind cannot, can't get out. So that's been the condition we are putting. Uh, if you are, uh, are not meeting the deadline yeah, and you will not get any, uh, any more from that and any donor who want to change their mind saying, I don't want to donate, 
they just can't get out. Once it is signed, you have to do it. That's being the problem statement. Now, if you want to publish a project on a, assume that you are a developer and you want to publish a project on a decentralized, this Kickstarter, this Kickstarter gives you a token and those tokens will be awarded or given to the only people who want to contribute to the project. And these tokens you can sell or you can keep for later funding also. Now there are two possibilities. If you want to, if project, if this particular project we are talking about, if it gets required funding, then you can exchange token for equity. That means shares or whatever. If this project doesn't get required funding, then you can save this token for future funding and you will wait. If something good happens, then you will take a call, something like that. These are the two possibilities. Now, in this case, if you see, there are like, particularly if you look at where can be the tampering can happen or where can be the chances of issue, you know, what you say, authenticity can be broken. Now, if you see, when we are saying start issues token, so what is the authorization that whatever the token it generates, and that's the same token you are actually applying for funding. So there should be something like a authentication need to be happen. So where, when you actually put this token for, when the, puts this token for exchange or equity, it should be able to authenticate that whether these are rightly generated by Kickstarter or you're tampering it. That could also happen, right? How does it does? So one example there on how we to sort out this one is like a digital signature. In cryptography, we have something called digital signature where you can actually put a digital signature of your authenticity. It could be as simple as, you know, there are certain, certain companies also, cryptography related companies like DigiSign and all, where actually do this digital sign. Like for example, let's say your sign, you actually made a digital sign. So every data when you put up, it will check whether that authorized sign is there or not. And it should be unique and all that. It will take care of all that. So that's like a digital sign on the internet, you are signing a document and it will see whether that's the case. Similarly, here also Kickstarter, when it issues, it puts a unique signature in the data so that when it's identified for equity, it will cross check whether it is rightly generated for Kickstarter or somebody tampered it. That is one area where it uses cryptography to figure out the data is not tampered. And another failure point in this entire problem statement, if you look at us, once the tokens are being given, now one example we have seen, if project get required funding, you exchange for equity, there it will authenticate using the digital signature mechanism. So what if I kept this token for later funding. Now, how does it know that when I say later funding, it could be five years, it could be two years, it could be three years. I don't know. Now, how it knows that this is being generated long back and it should be authenticated and we have to rely on it at all. So all those again has to be taken into account. How much the tenure of or how much the threshold or how much the TTL or time to live off that particular token is. That is one thing need to be keeping in mind because you need to remember whether this token is generated some years back and all. It shouldn't be indefinite enough. So all these things comes into picture when we talk about this kind of architecture. Okay, so that's more about it. So you see more of this example. If you see a lot of things here when it falls in and mostly the cryptography plays a key role in all that. So that's all I have. Thanks a lot. Uh, thanks for your time. Bye.